my people. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's eight three, eight, uh, eight one three. Yep. Eight one three, eight nine ten. Perfect. We can say that. We don't have to say those. Yeah, there's a reason why I was trying to have a conversation on these ones that I asterisked. This, 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 and this. This I don't think that we have to say, um, but we can say. So, so I would say, grab this. Because I came up with this based on this. Which is not to say I'm right or I, you know, didn't miss anything. Well, not that we have to have a minimum and a maximum, but we can't say. We can't be under 750, but we can cap it at 750. We can't put the minimum as The maximum must, must be minimum 750. Right. The percentage. Yeah. Correct? Thank you. And there's the door to this one. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. <coughs> the fire department get two deliveries of They go on automatic delivery, so sometimes it is weekly in the winter.
that went into the town's right of way or proposed town's right of way. Uh, he took pretty good exception to that, and so I agreed that um, I could redesign the site slightly to, to rectify that. Um, I think you'll note in his uh, final peer review for tonight uh, that he takes no exception to the, to the uh, plans that we provided and that we had satisfactorily taken care of all of the, uh, all of the engineering comments that he had provided us. Um, so as of now, <clears throat> there's no uh, outstanding engineering uh, concern. Um, Mr. Krebs, uh, I apologize. Maybe I, I should have reached out to John. Um, what for small technical items like this, I think we all know what it takes to prepare an actual set of plans. And so with Jay, everything Jay requested everything in PDF. I supplied everything to John in PDF also. Um, apparently, John was expecting a full set of plans. So you'll notice that John's technical review tonight is actually just a recap of last month's review. I had provided him a, a, a digital copy of the plans and a written formal response. Um, and so what I'd like to do with the board is just take his, what he's calling conditions of approval, um, go through my responses, and then we can sort of mutually check off what applies to be a condition of approval and what might not apply anymore. Um, Okay with that. Um, so, um, other than that, I think the, uh, the plans are in order for uh, finalization. Um, unless the board has any other uh, questions or you feel there's other outstanding items that you weren't able to address with your, uh, with your consultants. I, I just want to clarify <coughs> with Jay Stevens' review, um, it's talking about the well radius. Yes. You're talking about the well radius going into the town right of way. This right. references lot four. Um, yeah. So, so is there? Is it still extending into the? No. 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 So, because these aren't actual lots, and this is a little confusing, and these are limited common areas. Uh, let's see, where's the page that shows it? <clears throat> this shows. So maybe he felt that was satisfactory. 
Um, so I changed both the title of the plan um, and also the, uh, uh, the narrative items and things like that that are affected by that. Um, let's see, applicant should clarify if the trees are existing or proposed. Um, those the symbols on the plans are for proposed trees, and uh, we've provided a legend on the overview plan for the right side of the neighborhood plan. <coughs> are proposed, which goes to his next comment, uh, or one of his next comments, in that the tree should show up in the legend, which they do not. I'm not sure what comment that is, but we'll get to it, which we are in. Um, so, uh, John's first, you know what I'm realizing? His latest memorandum isn't in line with his original memorandum. They're the same discussion points, but they're in different orders for some reason. That's okay. Just, <laughs> just pick one and go with it. Okay. Follow. Why don't we start? I'm sorry to do this, but why don't we start with his latest memorandum? And we'll okay. just go through that point. Okay. okay. So the board uh, it says the board should re uh, consider requiring grading, uh, grading and drainage easements on lots one and two uh, to be part of the right of way. And I feel that uh, we've satisfactorily taken care of that because. I extended the right of way out uh, as we had discussed at the last meeting. So if the board will recognize on the plans, there's this odd jog, for lack of a better term, in the right of way here, and there's an odd jog in the right of way here, and that's to uh, satisfy John's grading comment. We do have uh, two remaining easements because I wasn't going to take the road right of way and go all the way around that. That doesn't seem prudent, um, but we still have one grading and drainage easement. But the grading that's around the roadway is now going to be all within the right of way. And additional drainage items are covered by any. <clears throat> so uh, I guess I'm submitting to the board that uh, John's technical memorandum on one for tonight is addressed. Um, the applicant should clarify that the uh, trees are existing or proposed. I discussed that. Uh, they're proposed and they show up in the legend as proposed. Uh, the applicant has labeled uh, the road right of way. We, we labeled the road right of way with a tax map and lot number, and that has to do with uh, for two reasons. One, we like to show the area of that because at some point somebody's going to have to write a deed to the town, and that area should be listed in that deed. Additionally, by listing that area, one could add up all these areas and make sure that it's the same area that I'm showing as part of the total lot area. And then two, his point is that I've given it a tax map and lot number, and that has to do with assessment, so that um, until such time as the road is transferred, that area can actually be assessed uh, to the association. Uh, we had discussed that with your assessing department during prior application, and I think they felt that it was acceptable to do. It's not done in many towns for some reason, and then you have this hanging piece of property that's unaccessible, um, and then the lot area is not listed, so when it's transferred, people really don't know what size it is, which is, in my mind, inappropriate. I have a three-year-old, so I get all the fun things from school. Numbers four, five, and six, those uh, would remain as conditions because all uh, uh, four and five, four A and five, should remain as conditions of approval because um, until a plan is finalized and certified, it should always have uh, stamps and signatures on it. So uh, we would supply that as part of the final package. Number six, the applicant should meet with the assessor to ensure that our designations of lot numbers is appropriate. I'm happy to do that as part of the condition of approval. Certificate of uh, monumentation. The board should require that the applicant provide a certificate of a guarantee, guaranteeing the placement of the monuments. I'm happy to do that as part of the conditional approval, um, except that um, we, on a standard basis, don't set the road uh, points until after road construction because they're just going to get wiped out. Um, and so, in that instance, what we do is you also require a bond for the roadway um, prior to any uh, building permits. 
So we would bond that as part of the construction item, but we would be happy to set the rest of them for you. So that would be a uh, condition of approval also.
And so prior to the or it would need to be bonded for as part of the infrastructure that's been finished. Are you talking about the fence? No. What you, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The fence, the fence, basically, you're saying you want that installed as prior to getting built the permit. As part of that building permit process, I think, you know, before construction really starts on the dwellings, yes. So then what I'm saying is um, you would want as either part of the CO or to make sure that the vegetation does get built, that it's bonded for as part of the rest of the infrastructure that's not built. When you say bonded for, you're talking about the road. Right, but the trees are really part of that part same. of that infrastructure. So. So if, if um, let's just say this cul-de-sac isn't built, so we would bond the remainder of what's not built. So we'd come up with a value, call it $100,000, gravel, pavement, drainage. And then we would say, okay, so we have that, but you have this also that's unfinished, and that's worth $10,000. So your vegetation is part of your construction bond. And so you're saying to potentially hold up the CO for that bond? Is that what you're suggesting? Well, you, you couldn't issue a CO without bonding the unfinished That's, infrastructure. Yes. Right. The state law says build or bond, one of the two. <clears throat> so, I mean, maybe that's enough to just say. Well, that's just some work going on on the road. Is there, at this point in time, is there just a plan to, to, to pave a certain portion of the road or, or to finish a certain portion of the road? Well, I'm assuming it'd all be done when they, when they have the paving crew come. They, they want to do the whole paving job in one. They'd like to. They'd like to, but they'd also would like, to come. Yeah. They would also like to start construction on this house. And so it's all going to be weather dependent. We're running out of time really fast this year. So if. Right now, there's a gravel surface. That if there's a paving company available, they're going to have somebody come in and pave just the first 500 feet to base course. If the weather breaks and we have a nice weather like we've had this week, they'll likely come in and finish this cul-de-sac and pave it all at once. But we don't know that. And so in that instance that it's not finished, that's why we post a bond. So there's financial security there that it will be finished. Planting was part of the CO or bonded for. Continue, if you would. Okay. No, go, so go, I, I'll jump there for you. Um, approval from the fire chief and the police chief. Okay, if the board wants that as part of the condition of approval, I'm okay with that loosely, but. We already had their approval on the, the first road. Side. Right. So, this so. This hasn't changed. So, uh, my initial response was, I, I'm sorry to be so flip, but John, why are you bringing this up? I mean, it's the same. I, I'm curious about that too, and I want to hear from the other board members because I agree with you, the road is built. But if there's, you know, so the roadway's shorter, you know, you did change the road in that the cul de sac, you know, the whole, you know, you didn't change the dimensions of the cul de sac, so. You know, but since he's mentioning it and he's our hired professional, I want to honor that with at least a discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, the, in the preliminary plans that went through, um, you had feedback from the police and the fire at that point. Yeah. And they weren't preliminary. No, they were. They were full. They were approved. Yeah. So, is there any changes specifically to? Anything pertaining to the road that these this equipment would come down that has changed? No. In fact, it's shorter and that section. But no, no width has changed. Zero. I mean, I was very sure. No, none of the construction standards have changed. Not, not one bit. Right. So it's basically the same road, regardless of what's happening around the road in cul-de-sac. It's the same road in cul-de-sac that they previously viewed and accepted. Yes. We took this cul-de-sac and it was here and we went like this. And that's it. It did, it, it did have a kick to it. You pulled it back, made it shorter, and, and changed some of the angle. I mean, in fact, in fact, we took, there was a bend in it. 
and right. it came back up. Yeah, it came back up. I mean, we took kind of took that out of it. My position is it's made it easy. From what they've already viewed and they accepted a prior plan, this is a an easier plan, you know, way for them to navigate. But that's just that's just one board member's opinion. I don't. I don't think it's necessary. I, I don't. I don't think this is substantial enough change that we need to go and get another approval. Mayor, okay with that? Yep. Okay. Uh, so, final approval from the town engineer. I think we have that. So we can scratch that off the list. NHDES final approval. <coughs> I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure that this actually needs subdivision approval. So I'll ask the question and make sure to forward the correspondence to you two. Um, so you, you can leave that as a condition of approval now, and then if it's deemed unnecessary by DES, I'll forward that correspondence. Copy, John, if you would. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then I'm not sure what fees need to be paid. We'd be happy to pay them. Uh, Jay has been sent me a bill, so that might be what you're talking about. Um, unless there's anything else. We have to check, so we're gonna, you know. This is so interesting. You don't need to record the plans. Yeah, we do. Yeah, you do. You need to do the recording, please. So he's up to date on all his review planning. The rest, yes. yes. Okay, so there's a fifty dollar check to attend to the town plus a blank check to the registry um, for do you record or recording. Water? No, we record now. Okay. That's new. That's new. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific reason that that's new? We were finding some people would take approved plans and not record them. Then they don't have a valid project. Well, right. Nonetheless, you know, <laughs> nonetheless, it creates problems. So this way, um, we know they're getting recorded because we're doing it. Okay. And they're recorded timely? Absolutely. Great. Same week. Yes. Great. Thank you. So other than that, um, board, are there any concerns, questions? I don't know. This is good. Kenneth, isn't your name 
Okay. Um, and by Cindy, uh, meet with the assessor. Certificate of monumentation with the conditions that uh, we bond the road and set the rest of the monuments. So you're not going to monument the road until uh, when? Can you clarify that? In the road. Once the road's built, set the monuments. Okay, so that would be like a condition of taking condition of taking over the road then. Like I just, you know, I, I want to, I, you know, timeline or. Condition. So well, here's the I'll lay the timeline before you. My applicant at some point is going to have to write you a check, and he's going to want his money back. And so that's that's the reason people finish projects now, and he can't have his money back until all the bounds are set and the grass is green on the side of the road. And that's are you good? Yeah. Okay. Continue. Thank you. Um, so this. Are we at oh, the condition of the? Where did get here? Um, so the building of the fence is it as a condition of the issuance of a building permit and the planting of proposed trees and shrubs as a condition of certificate of occupancy or a built or bonded road. Or a bond. Built road or bonded. So so the the plantings will happen as a condition of occupancy or else they will be bonded. The, the road and the plantings go together. Mm -hmm. The road and plantings will be completed or bonded for as a condition of occupancy permit. Uh, so no CFO will be issued unless the road is in place or unless the town is presented with a bond referencing the covering that work. Right. right, but add plantings to road. At plantings to yeah, they're all one. Oh, all okay. one. Really one. Okay. Um, and you said you added a tree and shrub planting schedule, or you you added the legend. Okay. You added the legend, but I think the schedule and my definition of schedule has been addressed. Well, it's been the, satisfied. It's been satisfied. Those, so those those good. Okay. Particular. So, uh, cost estimates for road and all improvements, landscaping? Yep. So what we do is we, we prepare an estimate, we submit it to Jay for his review and approval. Okay. And then he approves it. So that's a, that's a condition. Uh, and then... Do you want to add as a condition um, state subdivision approval or, or some kind of documentation from the state that it is either satisfied or not required? Yeah. Okay. It'll be an email from the road target for Don Buecher. Okay. And then I'm going to also include payment of all fees just because we're going to make sure Jay gets paid. Yeah, Jay right. gets paid now with the we have money recording for yeah. Yes. So, uh, so there will be eight looks like. We're past fire and pollution. Yeah, we take that. We're going to negate. Yeah. Any other? Okay. Motion? Anyone? Make the motion. I'll second it. The motion to approve the plans as presented with the conditions as stated. The eight conditions. Yes. The eight conditions as stated. Um, let us wait for our colleague to return for his voice.
So, John, we have a motion on the floor that's been seconded to uh, approve the plans as presented with the eight conditions as discussed. Would you like to hear the conditions? Or? I trust the board. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Um, these are going to go in the trash. Do you want to leave them? Or? If you could recycle them, that would be awesome. If you, if you want to leave them, I will make sure they oh. get recycled. Okay. You don't need to travel with recycling. I'll just throw them in the incinerator. That's fine. If you want to recycle them, that's fine. Well. Uh, yeah. I'll take care of them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Okay, board. Um, I'm hoping that you all had a chance to look over the minutes from the last meeting. Are there any comments or questions? Did people have a chance to review them? I'm going to refrain because I wasn't here. Yes, fair enough. Um, I, I did look at them. I didn't have any comments. Okay. okay. My consensus will approve them then. Correspondence? I don't think we, don't, we do not have any. Um, other business? We need to set the January date since the first Tuesday is um, the first. So um, I'm proposing that we meet on the 8th, if that works for people. We need to also consider that that would be a good time to hold public a public hearing on all of our proposed zoning amendments. So we can do that at the same time, or we can hold a separate meeting as the board desires. I I think that's efficient. Yep. Okay. Does the eighth work for everyone? That's good. Okay. Then the eighth at seven. Thank you. And we'll do the hearings at the same time. Same time. Um, I'm hoping you all had a chance to see John's um, his drafts. Likewise, I sent. Um, a write-up about accessory dwelling unit changes. So if you all want to take a moment to review them in case you haven't had a chance to, it would probably be a good idea to have language and such approved tonight so that we are uniform in what our planning of public hearing is, is about specifically when we get to that. Um, I have a copy of the zoning ordinance if anybody wants to consult it to see that it Correlates. I would, I would um, suggest that where it says Board of Selectmen, we change it to Select Board or their designate, just because they like to be called that now. Yep. That's all right with everybody. John forwarded to me the contact information for Bruce Mayberry, who is 
happy to come evaluate our situation and discuss what may or may not have changed in Rollinsford since 2011 and whether or not it is prudent to change our regulations such that, um, talk about impact fees, whether or not it makes sense and so forth. Um, there's a fee for that. Was it some time ago that we had someone? Is this, is it the same individual that yes. uh, he, he, talked about it in the the ongoing administrative concerns and uh, I wasn't there such. at that time, but that is my understanding that it was the it same, was the same that did that. firm, same company, same gentleman. And what's the fee? Um, he charges one hundred and twenty-five dollars an hour. He estimates it to be approximately five hundred dollars to come out and spend an hour and a half or two hours with us. So it's. I, I I don't I don't think that. I mean we've had a discussion about the past and the about impact fees and, and granted we're not a town that's bustling with development but there are things that are popping up that we see. Um, do so we feel we have to we have to get on board with impact fees? Not at all. So the thing about impact fees, to my mind, there are two things to consider with impact fees. One is that there's an administrative um, labor aspect to that, which you know we may or may not be able to deal with in the future, depending on you know how things progress with the budget and so forth. Um, the other is you have to prove that these developments are causing an impact for I'm which there is a cost. Absolutely, yeah. And right now our school is not at capacity. So there's room there. So not to say that there is enough room for a 200 house development. So at what point do we want to get concerned? Because a 200 house development might, you know, bring it to the bring it to worthwhile. It's not as though a 200 home development is out of the range of possibilities with the sizes of the parcels that could go up for sale at some point. So, you know, it's all about the way things are going now, I would say we're fine. We just don't know when that's going to happen. No, and you're, you're right. You have to be able to justify charging these fees. You have to show exactly where the money is going and that there is a need that has been created because of the additional burden of, of the population. Right. As it stands right now, to charge a certain amount of money and then return it to people with interest, um, you know, is, is an administrative drain that doesn't seem worthwhile. But but there might be a point at which... And there might be, yes. And, and we might get caught with our pants down, for lack of a better term, if, if one of these big parcels that can be subdivided comes up for sale and sells and is purchased by a developer. Um, do we want to get ahead of it, I guess is the question. Well, I guess my question is, is there a way to get ahead of it without overburdening ourselves unnecessarily? Mm -hmm. Is there someone from Stratford Regional Planning that could yeah. tell us about for That's an alternative. Less would that be, yes, that would be as costly either. Um, the town has a membership with Stratford Regional, and for that membership we could kind of have them come out at least once a year and do a training on maybe one specific topic or else a general over, you know, overview of topics, however we want to structure it. But yes, we can have them do that. And, and that might be a good idea too because it's, a, it's an agency with a different perspective than somebody we've already heard from. But I, I, even at this point, I don't feel myself as being educated enough in how they all work to really make a decision on it. Should be I'm with you on that. You know, I'd like to know more about it, you know, from someone who knows about it, with, with no bias in any direction. That's that's where I sit. No, I completely agree with that. So, are we on board with the idea of scrapping a change in impact fees for this voting cycle, for this election cycle, yeah, and I then? I don't think we're in any way prepared. We wouldn't have time, I think, to, to have someone else be okay. talking, given that this is December. Okay, so would you like me to reach out to Stratford Regional and inquire about getting them here for some kind of training? And if so, is impact fees what we want to focus on, or do we want to prioritize something else? I think something we've else? touched on a few different times, and I think we need to 
I think we need to address it and decide whether we're going to go for it or whether we're not. Um, can, can it, uh, so we, we've talked about growth ordinance and how fees, like, wrap we that. Can, we, can, we can maybe package that. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Okay, does that sound workable? The growth ordinance was the other one. That, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna scrap the idea of a growth ordinance or a growth um, aspect to our zoning ordinance and tie it all together with impact fees as training first. We'll revisit it next year. Does that sound like a plan? So we're down to three proposed zoning ordinances as per John's sheet that he provided. Um, getting our accessory dwelling unit language um, congruent with state law. Um, the special exception about um, six or more units in a, in a building and adding or designate to the select board. Does anybody have any comments about John's language for number two, the special exception? Let's do this one at a time. Is there any discussion or question about This is a single change. It's changing it from the current wording here to this new wording. Right, to all that language, which right. has implications. You know, he's adding an intent to some degree with, you know, with that language. Right, I mean, and what kind of comes to my mind is that the year 2019, because that's, you know, when I think of the old mill, you know, the blue building, and that was certainly predated 2019, but... Um, I mean, it just, that just means that, you know, someone built a four unit last year and they want to chop it up even smaller and make it a six unit now. Or more. Well, or, they would have to need a space for Yeah, space they would have to need so. space for But I, I, I see this more as something pertaining to some of the, I'm not going to say original, but some of the older. Well, I guess you really can't do that. Well, I'm wondering if that whole sentence is even pertinent because I don't think it... I don't think there are any buildings in town for which that would apply, but the exception of the mill, I suppose, is why he's allowing that to be there, because you have to allow the mill that potential since it's zoned as a mixed since use it's now. It's used now, yes. But to my mind, those are the only buildings for which this can speak to, because any other building is probably maxed out at capacity. Within its state, within its footprint, yes, unless they right. the footprint, right? Which which opens it up to other scrutiny. Well, then that's safe. In that case, it's just a safe leak 2019. Because it really doesn't matter because it's really only that limited amount of buildings that really would qualify for this that have the, the mass and the you know the space. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I just yeah, that, that reads like to me. So, uh, what is the real change here? So, existing says buildings containing multiple dwelling units shall contain no more than six. Period. Period. Yeah. And now we're saying new buildings <coughs> contain no more than six. Buildings that were constructed prior to 2019 should be allowed to be converted to multiple units with restrictions provided they meet the other zone. Without restrictions. No. Uh -huh. Remove the restrictions, but still there. It doesn't mean everything else. Yep. It's existing. So that means you would already have the parking that is Yep. If you have to have two spaces per unit, I think now as it is. I'm not sure that that's even a pr the problem that needs to get addressed as far as, you know, the, the intent in changing the language is because when Bluen Sure. went through his process, um, he was allowed in one area of the zoning, and then he met, um, he ran up against a wall with the other, um... No, the wall was density, wasn't it? Because it's six is six, period. 
Yeah. But I don't think the problem was with 81210 because um, because there's nothing wrong with saying buildings containing multiple dwelling units shall contain no more than six, six dwelling unit yeah. units per building. It does because he has more than six in that building. Um, yeah, that was his problem. That, that, that was his problem. Limited to okay. Six. So then we do have a problem with 2019 because he remains, but maybe it has to remain that way because he got his approval prior to, I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about whether that language serves the interest with containing the date, and, and it, not to say that it doesn't. What, my question would be, why is he, why is he separating new buildings from existing? Why not just, I mean, I, I, I have that be, same question it's with the date, it's the same thing. Size. I agree, and I... Yeah, but you, you kind of, by putting 219, you sort of establish a, a grandfather effect before or after 2019 when your building was built. Right, and that makes blue and still not compliant. No, because the, the building itself was constructed before 2019. Right, so any building that's so in town he's now... Just, he's just modifying it. it. It's sort of a safety to someone coming out of something a little wild downstream that yeah, like may making, turn into something even wilder. Yeah, apartment building. Like a new apartment. Right. Right, something that's fits now, but Yeah, and he's saying that okay with the parking spaces. Okay. Because that's a mixed use building with a commercial and residential. I think he's safe the way we were recording now that I thought of two thousand nineteen. Only because of the, what exists now limits it in itself. Thoughts? I think we agree. Okay. Okay, so we're good with that. Um, any comments on number three, changing select um, board of selectmen to select board or their designate? That's pretty straightforward. Um, and then skipping back up to going out of order here to number one, I provide that on a separate sheet. It refer it's referenced in a few different places. This printout from the Municipal Association offers guidance on um, why I proposed the changes that I proposed. Do you have another? Yeah, there's one over there if you want to. No, not that. The, um, what you typed up? Yeah, I think it's, it's in there. Yeah, thank you. Just so you can see what we're looking at. So I'm putting in bold my recommendation. So, um, under the table of uses, which is 6.9, A, under table of uses, is residential. And the first item under residential is accessory dwelling unit. So, under that table, um, I believe we need to add a P, saying that it is permitted in the industrial dis district because we allow for single family dwellings in the industrial district. You must allow ADUs in the same districts that you allow single family dwellings. Because an E is an exception on that chart, right? So P would be permitted. E is P is per, SE, special exception. Special exception. That's yes. not the case anymore because the way the state changed. So now we would have to have a P, correct? We have to have a P, I yeah. believe, yeah. yes. Okay, so um, under 8.1, multiple dwellings, two family dwellings, accessory dwellings, and renting of rooms, number three under that is accessory dwelling units. Um, the reference, it references the table 7, which is the residential permitted uses, and it's really 6.9 as I noted above, not 7. So we need to change the reference there in the text to 6.9 rather than 7. Um, under that, number 4, um, I believe we should delete. It limits the number of bedrooms to 1. We are not allowed to limit the number of bedrooms. Um, so I think we ought to just delete that number altogether and renumber. Well, we have the safety of the square footage required. Maximum. Exactly. So that's sort of, that's what limits on. In, its own in and of itself. In, right. in and of itself, yes. Yes. Okay. And then number 12, under that same section, maximum size is currently 500 square feet in our regs. Um, we must allow a minimum of 750 square feet. So we could change the maximum size to 700, um, 750 square feet. So it becomes the maximum and the minimum at the same time, um, which is bizarre. And I, you have know, have to be 750 square feet. That is the minimum. So we can allow for larger than that, but, but we given can that set our, our maximum, we can set our maximum. They we set have to, our minimum. 
we have to allow that minimum. Right. So it, we kind of cap it. Basically, it has to be 750 because that's the state minimum in Rollins or maximum. So you, you you're capping. If you're going to have it, it will be 750 square feet. Well, what is that? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not even sure what to say. But the building that. itself may not allow it that certain square footage right. without. If you leave before I do, don't set the alarm. Okay, okay. very good. And I'll, I'll do the same. Thank you, sir. Right, by, by pigeonholing that exact dimension, that's really specific. Just because and it's not, yes, and that will be problematic. But that's what I mean. I mean, you could say 750 to, to 850 just to give them a little bit of wiggle room. But something you would have, in other words, you have to you, you would have to frame this to be just 750. Well, and we have to allow a minimum of 750, but I'm not sure. Does that mean we cannot approve something that's proposed to be 600? It's a state. It's a state minimum. I, mean, I think that. It, so the minimum is 750. If it's not 750, it doesn't qualify. It's not the minimum. Do you, do you see it in there? We may not limit the ABU to less than 750 square feet. We may not limit it to less, but we could allow it to be less. So I think that allows us to have a maximum of 750. Okay. And then somebody could propose and we could approve something less than that, but we cannot dictate that it will be less I, than that. I think the maximum is a good idea. We don't call it a 2,000 square foot. Idiot, right. Right. Um, we not limit. We not limit. Right. So we're not limiting, we're not requiring, but we could allow. We could allow. Okay. So they could build 600. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. could allow it. We just cannot impose that minimum. Okay. Less must than allow a minimum. So we can change the For language. We allow a minimum. We can expand upon the language in number 12 to, um, you know, we will a we will a allow um, ADUs to be up to 750 square feet. Some you know something to that effect. Is probably safe. Do we okay. want a minimum though? I would say no, because we don't want to restrict people to having to build something 750. We would want to allow somebody, I would think, to build something at five or 600 if they want to. Yep. Okay. Right, as long as it services all of the requirements of an ADU. Yeah. I mean, I you have it. to have painted yeah, facilities, it. you have to have cooking facilities. I mean, mm -hmm. 700 is not real big. No. That's, that's an efficiency. Like that. Right. So, yeah, I mean, they're saying it right here. A minimum is unnecessary, but maximum is a good idea. So if someone is going to add 5,000 square foot, you need to 1,500 square foot. Right. Just make sure your maximum size is at least 750. Just make sure. And we would, we would have that. That would be our maximum. So the current language says the size of the accessory dwelling unit shall not exceed 500 square feet. I would just say that we change 500 to 750. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then under 18 of that same section, it says accessory dwellings shall be allowed in a detached accessory structure that is in existence prior to the adoption of this ordinance, provide the following de conditions are found to exist. Number, uh, letter A, under that, the existing detached accessory structure consists of at least 500 square feet of floor space. So again, I would just swap out 500 for 750. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talking about existing structures rather than building a structure. But the same condition, the same allowance would pertain. So this is, this reads to me as though it's a minimum. The, the existing detached accessory structure consists of at least 500, and we would substitute 500 for 750. Am I reading that? Just keeping in line with our attached. So you're right, okay, so the existing detached accessory structure consists of no more than, we'll, we'll change that to Well, no, no more because than. if you've got a structure that's 750, how are you going to chop an ADU out of it? It seems like that. 
This is Otherwise, you're turning this, let's say someone has a 750 square foot garage. This is for detached. That's what I'm saying, it's a detached, detached garage. Yeah. So, so it is an interesting conundrum because you've got an existing structure. Now you're turning this garage into just a, 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 another unit. It's not really You've a, got a 200 square foot mudroom with no, like, a Right, you see what I'm saying? You know? I would think that the okay. detached structure has to be big enough to support the ADU as well as the structure itself. The use, the original use of the structure, otherwise it's changing so, the use of the building. So do we say, you know, at least 500 but no more than 750 square feet and give them a range? But I'm talking about, but we if, can't if you're going to have the, the ADU, the accessory dwelling unit, yes. inside of another structure, let's say a garage, just because it's easier. You got, I would think you don't want to have at least a 1,500 square foot garage so you can still have a garage and put an ADU above it. Because otherwise, if it's 800, you've really changed the use of that structure. So it's, Entirely, yes, Entirely. but I think that's the intent. I think that's the intent that you no longer have an, a garage, or you don't necessarily still have a garage. But you just have an ADU. So yeah. how are you proposing the word to be? That the that this detached structure can only be a max because now you're forcing them to change it from a garage. If you say the maximum square footage of that structure is seven fifty, mm -hmm. now you're forcing them to change the use of that building. You're, there's not very enough room left for garage. Well, okay, so the existing detached accessory structure consists of at least 500 square feet of floor plate, of floor space. That is not speaking to how much of it would be an ADU. That's the accessory structure itself. So, so how big do we want a structure itself to be before we say that we're going to max you out at 750 square feet? Because we cannot prescribe a minimum less than 750 square feet, well, even I mean, though it's detached. I'm thinking of, I don't know their name, but the barn on Sligo and Bear, where he put a mother-in-law in, inside the barn. Now, mm -hmm. Granted, the barn is, is a large structure and there's still ample square footage left over, but he did tuck in that um, AU. So do we want to say anything at all about how big the structure is? I don't think you can. No, you so, can. So he could, he could conceivably convert the entire barn into a... No, well, we're no. maxing you out at 750 okay. square feet. Uh, for, for the accessory unit. But that may be your whole structure. Yeah, so but it doesn't have to be your whole structure. You still don't have a functional structure. Yeah, I don't think we care what this I don't think we, we can care. Granted, it has to be these 750 to support the ADU. Right. But if you want to have a garage that you have an upstairs and you want to put an ADU up there and still have your garage. So, I, st so, um... I don't think we can cap the existing structure's space as long as the existing structure whether, whether the, the ADU takes up every bit of that square footage or a quarter of the structure. So is A necessary at all? Is, what? is this, is that, is that sentence necessary at all? Would it be better to scratch so this? So this is saying, I think I understand it better now, that the building, your detached building, has to be at least 500 square feet before you can attempt to put an ADU in. At least 500 square feet. And I'm saying that. Which is not unreasonable. Right. It's so if still you have a shed that's 200 square feet, you're not going to convert that to no. no, because you, and, and, and right. the, the flip side is you change. You, you no longer have the shed. Now, you, right? Yep. You've changed the use of that building altogether. Right. But are we going to require that they still have a shed or a garage or a barn or can it all be for this see, purpose? I, I don't have that answer for you. Because I have a garage that has space up above that I could certainly put that in and still have full use of my garage. But my neighbor has a very tiny garage and 750 might be his whole garage. But if you don't want a garage, then do we want to dictate to you that if you're I don't, I don't think you can dictate, you know, what my building has to or can't be as long as I can fit the 750 in there. The rest of it is still my building to, to use as I wish. So, we, so I don't think we can put a limit on... Why do you think they use the term floor space? You know, they that, that in, the, in the prior. I mean, I almost think floor space means, you know, living area for the ADU. Yeah. I, I mean, I think there's a reason why there's a differentiation between the, the phrase. Floor space and what? You know, like what's right, the alternative? Right, square feet of floor space. As opposed to. Five and the other one doesn't feet. say anything at all. The prior one, the. the, the it doesn't say floor space, huh? 
I see it here on the 18. I don't think there's any other reference. No, because in most other cases you're putting it inside of a, a, a home anyways, a house anyways. This is only for a detached, so it would have to be an outbuilding. Because if it's attached, it's part of your main structure, it's part of your main house. But I'm, what I'm saying, Kevin, is what, why are they adding up floor space? Why would they just stop it at feet if it wasn't, I mean, I'm just thinking it means you know, the livable area of the ADU versus the, the rest of the structure. Well, because you've got, you've got GL, a gross living area in a house. But in a garage, you don't have any gross living area. It's just floor space. It's, it's not. It's not heated. Right. It's, it's so not living space. Until you convert. So you it. can't say square feet of living area because it's not living area unless you transition it. So you so have a good point. It, that that sticks out. Why is that? Why is that? there than nowhere else? But because you're talking in a, a, a detached dwelling, a detached building, it can't. It can't be living space because you'd have two different houses on one lawn. Mm -hmm. Potentially, yes. And so that's my question is, you know, ADUs according to our regulations have to be attached. So I'm, do we even have to allow them in an accessory structure? I, I, I think you run into problems if you try to take out that ability to put it detached. Although it does, I did read something in here about the detached. So ADU must be attached. Oh, a unit. municipality is not required to allow detached ADUs. For example, a unit that is above a detached garage or is a standalone building, if it does allow them, they are subject to other provisions of the law, except that an increased lot size may be required. So we can make them change the minimum acreage to allow for that. But we do not have to allow 18 at all. So, so we... 18 currently exists, right? Yes. And it's at least 500 feet of floor space. Right? 18 pertains to the Yes. So yes. we're thinking that we want to change it to be a maximum of, a, of 750 square feet <coughs> of KDU? Well, and we have to allow that as a minimum. Right now, we are allowing them with a minimum of 500, which we could continue to allow and add the maximum of 750 and be done with it. Mm -hmm. Or we can get rid of A, or, you know, just be, I mean, we have allowed 18. 18's in there. We can get rid of 18. We don't have to have it. Um, I'm not sure I that think we can strike A. Um, I think we can strike A. But I don't, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to start seeing you know, a bunch of sheds turned into, you know, living space. Uh, that's, that's, tiny houses. <coughs> yeah, that's really not. Tiny houses. But is, did they create this lot because of the tiny houses? <coughs> so this predates tiny houses, I'm sure. This is probably older. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. But but it's it's, it's conceivable tiny. that you could build a 300 square foot tiny house in, on, next to a with no yeah, but now you're talk, now you're talking building a building. This is a this is different than a existing detached structure okay. that you're looking at modifying. Right, because if you want an ADU, it's attached to your house. This is an existing structure, so you're not going to build it's a tiny house. Existing detached structure. So I think we're safe there. And uh, a new permit for a tiny house is going to have to go before the select board. That's, that's a whole so, different yeah. thing. Right. That's a whole different thing. So I think striking A, and that takes care of the concern about floor space, whether or not it's floor space. And it still has to fit everything else in the guidelines, which means the 750 that we talked about. Um, yeah, leaving B, because you, you don't want to change the footprint, you want to try to make, let the building remain the same, and you know, that it's not a total re re revamp of the building. C would be just you know, minimal, minimal modifications to uh, you know, cheap rock insulation, you know, wiring and plumbing. Well, let us just note under 18, the final sentence, that those structures are exempt from 8, 9, and 13, which are not insignificant. Well, and, and, and realistically, a point I brought up before, it also really should be exempt from time number 10, because you can't have a, you know, a doorway between two buildings that are not 
Right. Like it's it's re yes exactly. So By yeah. nature of being 18, it does not comply with 10. It can't be a direct access, right? So um, we should at the very least add 10. Mm -hmm. So are we striking A or are we adding 10? We're striking A and adding 10, both of them. What is 10? So 10 is, so ten is um, the accessory dwelling door. shall have convenient and direct access to the primary dwelling unit, a connecting inside door, and its own separate entrance exit. So it will not be connected with a door because, because it's, it's a, a separate, separate building. Yeah. So we add 10, we strike in. Yeah. I'd be for that. Okay. Is there any way that this could be misconstrued such that... Not so much because it does say you can't really modify the... You can't really change... The you know, the, the footprint of the building, and it's only minimum modifications to make it happen. You can't totally revamp a, a structure to, to make this happen. It's for, it's for, you know, notching a little, you know, in-law in your garage, above your garage, or in your barn. Okay. And it still has to fit everything else if for 88s. John, are you in favor of deleting A and adding 10? I think so. Sorry, I'm finding a little bit confusing, but I think so. Um, would you like some more time? I don't know. No, no. I, like, I, I no, just, just uh, want to feel out the board for where we're at. Yep. Okay. I think that makes sense to do. Yeah, and add 10. Just, just by definition of the structures, right? Okay. So, are we okay with everything else on this page relating to changes in the zoning ordinance for ADUs? Do you feel like you have this? Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking you were going to remind him. <laughs> okay, I can do that. I can do that. Um, just one question that kind of popped in my mind. When we talked about the word in select board and their designee, yes. should it be designees? Does it always have to be the same person? They, they could. Well, they can designate. They can designate, designate you anybody. And announce you, and announce you because you're on vacation. Yeah. But that just becomes a different. They, they can designate a different person. I would say. At any time, to do you know, any project. Okay. So yes, I think that's fine. I don't think any designates. But that's a good question. I think it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Because the designate can change. It, it's not a permanent. It's right. It's not recognition. A, it's not it's a permanent not a designation. Okay, as long as it's not limited to the same person, because maybe that person's not going to work. Well, not only that, but like, you could designate me to do one job and Caroline to do another. In, in which case, you're both designees. Yeah, we're both. Yeah. It designates, and they're designees. Could it hurt to put designate? In parentheses, with the S, the S in parentheses, okay. Just to, I don't know what I can point out to my children that I made that ass. <laughs> you made a mess of yourself. Kevin really impacted yeah. the town, yeah. leaving yeah. your mark. Can I get a footnote because I'm uh, A-K-I, N-E-S. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Very good. Um, the only thing I'm, I'm thinking about is I'm sorry to go back to this. You're fine. In terms of it's detached. Yep. So the new law really doesn't address detached. No, it does not. We don't so have because to allow we don't have to allow them. We do allow so, them. We don't so, have to. okay, so why is it that if the new law doesn't address them, why do we have to change the minimum to 750 square feet? We, we're going to scratch A, so there will be no minimum. It will only reference 12, which will be changed. 12, which says the size shall be, which shall not exceed, that will be changed to 750. And that will apply also to the accessory structure that has an ADU in it. So we're going to scrap A because there will be no reference to any minimum. Okay, so the only possible impact of this change in regard to that is that if we have an existing detached accessory unit that's it's 500 right. feet, they could enlarge it. They can't change the footprint. You can't change the footprint. That's B. No net increase in building footprint or floor space shall be allowed. Okay. You can't add okay. floor space. Okay. Yeah. All right. okay. That's kind of the caveat, I think, that 
you, know, you can't modify the building to, to an ADU in there. It has to fit right. in the building. In the, within the building. Okay. And that ADU still has to meet side of the project. So you can't tuck a real tiny one in there. Okay. You still have to fit ADU guidelines. This weather is attached to it again. Okay. I like it. Okay. Then we shall present it on January 8th. Are there any other questions, topics, concerns before we adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Adjourn.